Hello boys and girls. I thought I'd just do a quick video of my little uh, SL125. Um, it's been parked in the side of the shed, over the side over there, under covers for about the last six years, probably over six years, the last time I rode this bike. Um, so I've decided to get it out um, and do some work to it and get it going again. So a lot of dust and crap on it and spiders and that, but uh, I knew what I had a problem with it before is that the rear swing arm was um was absolutely shot the bush the bushings um so the swing arm a lot of movement in the swing arm uh, the last time i rode it which which was actually at a motocross track uh it's part of our vintage motocross um group that i'm part of uh the club and i actually won the 125 class four stroke class um so there you go i won it the last time i rode it i actually won the 125 class on this bike i won it because i was the only bike in the race yeah there's no other bikes in the race. Uh, yeah, don't know why. They're good fun to ride. Um, 12 horsepower, I think they are new. Something like that. Mm. Um, so I've decided to get it back out because another chap of mine is riding for a new club who's actually a breakaway from the vintage motocross club that I'm part of because they don't really ride vintage bikes anymore. The club's really gone towards the um, like pre-90, you know, you know, that type of models. Pre-89, that type of models, you know, my motocross bikes. Um, they've even got a period class now. Anything that 20 years old that you can ride, which is my 2003 model I can ride. Um, so this club here now is called um, Hunter Classic. So the bikes are all pre-80. So they've got to be um, you know, 79 and older downwards. So 79, 76, all the way down. So yeah, um, I'm going to be riding this, just putting around. That's all it is, all good fun. So yeah, it's an SL125, um, but it's not. So what it is, it is actually the motor. It is actually an SL2, uh, S. SL125 motor, 70, a K1, I think it's a 70, K1, 71, 72 model. So, plane going over. So yeah, that's what that is. And the chap I bought off did tell me, he said the frame itself, which are identical frame, it's actually an XL100 frame, a 73 model, but it's the same as a SL frame. There's no difference. You go on the, the parts manual for this year, it's all the same. So that's what it is. Um, so I decided to get it out. I'm not worried about the motor. The motor was actually, the top end was rebuilt when I bought off the chap um, all those years ago, eight years ago. So, um, but I'll show you the video of starting it. Um, first go, see how it goes, see how long, how many kicks it takes. Uh, so we're not doing that uh, yet today. Um, this will always just be one quick video. I'm very hurry up because I don't want to go too long. So I'll just show you quickly the uh, swing arm. I had to take that out. It was a nightmare to get out because, if you come over here very quickly, um, the uh, swing arm bolt, there it is there. Um, I started cleaning it up. Uh, but it was rusted. It was seized in there. Um, and the, the bushings in here, uh, there they are there. You can see what's left of them. Um, I had to heat them right up to get them out. And you can see they're not in very good shape. So that's why it was all seized up in there. So I've got new bushing bushes coming for it. I've also got a new nut coming for it as well. So that'll be all brand new inside there. Uh, they were quite easy to get out. Uh, it's just the swing arm to try to get it out was absolutely a nightmare. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got that coming, and I've got a little retaining type clip, what do you want to call that, um, for holds the front sprocket on. There's the front sprocket. I'm not getting a new sprocket. The sprocket's fine. Like I said, I don't want to spend lots of money on the bike. So I've got the sprocket coming. I'm oh, sorry, the retaining clip. That, that's, as you can see, it's uh, not very good. So I've got that coming, and also what I've noticed is that the fork seals are leaking as well, which I knew that when I last rode it. There you go. They're leaking, so I've got new fork seals coming and boots. So I'll get I'll go away with these and just put the normal dust seals on. Alrighty, and what we'll do, we'll see if it starts. See how many kicks it takes. So like I said, it's been sitting there for six years. I'll check the oil, you know, I'll warm it up, and then I'll put new fresh oil in it. But uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the battery to charge. Uh, the battery does now have I've measured it, it does have six volts now, but I'm worried it's not getting fully charged. It's been going now for about four hours. And it's, uh, this indicates now that it is more than 25% charged, uh, but it's less than 50% charged, but it's not getting any more. It's not charging anymore. It's not going to full. It needs to be in the green light there. So the battery, uh, it might be uh, yeah, on its way out, I suppose. But I don't want to put a new battery in it. So as long as it's 6 volts in it, when I hook it up, that's all I want. Alrighty, so we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get it going. Next video, I'll show you. I'll, I'll put the swing arm in and show you all that. And, uh, and we'll see if it goes. Catch you later. All right, uh, I pulled the front forks out. Um, so remember, there's a 1973 
um, forks and it is an XL100 um, forks on these. Uh, I actually have a workshop manual that my brother owned. Uh, he actually did have an XL175 I think and I think he bought the manual so I actually got to have got a workshop manual. It's been oops, uh, quite good to have. Alright so uh, the forks are apart. Uh, there's your little damper rod. <laughs> Not pretty basic, a <laughs> couple little holes in it. There's some holes there for you all to go through. But hey, hey, it's got a damping rod. Um, this is your top out spring. Um, so yeah, it has actually got a little top out spring on it. So yeah, it's got that in it. Uh, fork seals, there they are there. A couple of little things, got them in order so don't forget. Who's ever had it before me, they've actually put in some um, preload stuff. A couple of washers, a bolt, give it a bit of preload. Um, I won't put them back in, I'll see what it's like first. Uh, it's not like I'm going to be trying to do any triples on it you now, is it? You know, so, so all in all, it's all there. Um, but the only thing that's pretty bad on them, which um, you might not be able to see this, uh, is that all the pitting and the rust through the uh, uh, the fork tube, the inner tube itself on the chrome. Um, I'm assuming that could probably be fixed, uh, but I'm not. I don't want to spend the money on it. I just want it to um, mechanically. Uh, rewrite and ride because it's only get, get written, written, written every bloody once every year. That you know, so I'll clean them up best I can. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's the uh, the swing arm bolt. I'll clean it up, and it's not not that good, but it'll do the job. Um, that's the spacer there. So that spacer very quickly. That spacer that should come off. That is not uh, on there, but I can't get it off. It's it seized on there. But anyway, it can stay there. All right, so what we do now is sit and wait. I've ordered uh, the fork seals and all the other uh, bushes that I need. Uh, so, you know, it's a bike that I bought eight, well, over eight years ago. I bought it for $900. So, uh, like I said, I don't want to uh, spend lots, lots of my money on it. Just as long as it's all good. So I haven't even looked at the motor or anything like that, but I'm pretty confident with Honda that motor will go. So, uh, yeah, wait and see. The fork seals and the little boots are on their way. They're being sent. So we just have to wait and see. They're due in March sometime. All righty, I'll keep working. Catch you later. Quick update on the uh, the mighty SL125. Uh, it's an SL125 motor, which I think is a 72, but the rest of it's a XL100 1974 frame in that. But they're identical. There's no difference to them, as far as I understand. Well, after uh, getting the parts, I put it all back together again. Didn't bore you about doing that. Front fork went back together um, nicely. Yep, all done, all in there, topped up, ready to go. They actually work really well, uh, well, what they can do. Um, new bolts in down the bottom there for the bleeders. Uh, they're all good, not leaking. All good. Uh, the new swing arm is now in place and all cleaned up and lubed and even polished up. You can see that there. Polished up a bit of a bolt there by the newest part on the bike. So, yeah, it's all cleaned up. So there's no movement at all now in that swing arm. Beautiful. Looks like I bought one over 30-odd years, 40 years ago. Yeah. Uh, just gave a bit of a tidy up. Uh, checked all the nuts and bolts. Um, I'm not sure if I told you last time, but it did start actually first kick. Uh, but since then, uh, cleaned the fuel out, uh, the fuel filter out, all sorts of stuff. Um, now new fresh fuel in it. Uh, leaving the original tyres on. The original tyres. These tyres are about 20 odd years old. In the back of them there, so they're old tyres, but they'll do. So yeah, that's about it. Bit of a tidy up, clean up. That's about it. So uh, I'm going to warm it up and put new fresh oil in it. And that's it, it's ready, ready for the next race coming up. Uh, now, yes, I don't expect to go anywhere to win any races with a 14 horsepower motorcycle, which that's what it was when brand new, but not anymore. It probably hasn't got that in it. Did have a top end build in it, apparently, when I bought it off the, the, the chap many years ago. Um, but after six years, uh, like I said, started basically almost started first kick, but yeah, third kick she started. So there you go. Uh, yeah, the chap I bought off, of, I paid 950 bucks for it over six years ago. So, yep, uh, call it, you call it like a bucket racer. We used to have them in Australia, bucket bikes. They could race, they're just cheap bikes. Anyway, the only thing I've got to do is get uh, rear shocks for it. They are uh, from China, just cheap ones, but they're that, they're that rigid. 200 kilos, you wouldn't move them. They're just terrible. So, anyway, I'll have to do for now. All right, so I'm trying to do all this me, me, on myself. So what I'm going to do... Um, I'll get it started and warm it up and give you the sound of it and then I'll change it all and then maybe next time I actually if I feel like it I'll video where we're riding and have a look around the pits of all the other old bikes um, but yeah just hang, hang in there with us and I'll see if I can get it going 
Let's put the camera down. So just amuse yourself. Alrighty. Uh, what are we doing here? So now that should be fuel on. Now that should be fuel on. Right, I'm not sure if I've got enough fuel in it. But anyway, we'll give it a go. Make sure the power is on. Um, the only thing I haven't done as well, which I probably will do, uh, I've got a manual for it which your brother gave me. Uh, I'll check the points, make sure they're working all fine. Well, they were, I mean, the bike started after six years. It's a bit noisy in the top end, there's, there's in the tappets or that. Um, so I might, I might, uh, I think they might be screw adjustment. I don't know, I need to look at them, so I might need to adjust them as well, so what the clearance is. Um, so, I had to get a new fuel tap for it, but I've got two of these sent to me, and when you turn them off, they still leak out a little bit. Um, so I've got this little off and on, little off and on switch here, um, but yeah, that's what happens, I suppose, when you get cheap shit. Alright, so hang in there with this. Sorry, right, the camera's pointed not directly at anything. Let's see if she'll start. I'm going to do all this one talk. There we go. Oh, died. Um, I think that's more so about the fuel than anything. It's, it's just about empty. Uh, so there you go. Alright, we'll catch up uh, yeah, catch up later. Maybe on the racetrack. See you.